East, West, Downtown, Midtown, North Toronto, which part of Toronto to choose if you are thinking to buy a home. This is what we are going to talk about in today's video. We will also discuss what kind of lifestyle residents of these parts of the city are getting and what cons and pros you should consider. My name is Olena, I am a real estate broker with Sotheby's International Realty in Toronto. I appreciate you being back here to my channel and if you learn anything valuable today, all I ask is to hit that like button and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, if you watch this video and you would like to connect with me, you may go to the first link in the description to this video and book a discovery call with me at the time that works for you. So let's begin. Toronto is very different in terms of vibes, lifestyles and looks. And I understand buyers who get confused when it comes to selecting a part of Toronto and a neighborhood for their new home, especially these buyers who are new to Toronto and have limited knowledge of its areas. Uh, if you're one of those buyers uh, and you feel stuck with this, you have two options. To do a lot of research on the internet and try to study the city on your own, or you may ask a local realtor uh, to help you in this situation. I want to show you my way of assisting my clients that are not sure which part of Toronto will fit them the best. First of all, to make it simpler, I segment Toronto into five areas – East, West, Downtown, Midtown and North Toronto. Believe it or not, each area has its own character, provides its unique lifestyle and offers certain amenities that may or may not work for you. At the first consultation, we discuss what kind of lifestyle you would like to achieve, uh, what your key destinations will be, what amenities you need to have close to your home, and also we discuss the budget. For example, I had new clients um, at the first consultation who are relocating from Los Angeles due to a job transfer. This family has always lived in the urban environment and would like to keep that vibe at uh, their new home in Toronto. Besides, they have three school a children and they are interested in top private schools based on this information it seems like we are left with the midtown only now when the options are limited to one area we are narrowing down our search to a few neighborhoods that represent the best match for my clients in terms of lifestyle and of course are within their budget this way of selecting a home uh, delivers the best value and saves uh, lots of time and efforts for my buyers. Now, let's look at five parts of Toronto and discover who should consider living in each of them. Toronto East will be the first to examine. If you are moving with the family, then uh, not the entire area should be considered. I only recommend the beaches, then Forth Village, Riverdale and Leslieville. That's it. The choice between these neighborhoods will mainly depend on how old your kids are and what budget you will be operating with. For a deeper discussion and to find out the reasons why I'm putting it this way, please get in touch with me and book your discovery call in the link below this video. So who should live in Toronto East End? First of all, families looking for a diverse and family-friendly community with access to green spaces. Second of all, uh, nature enthusiasts who appreciate being close to the beaches and parks for outdoor activities. Third, young professionals and first-time home buyers seeking more affordable housing options uh, without sacrificing convenience to downtown Toronto. Fourth, those who appreciate the charm of low-rise residential communities and relaxed pace of life. Now let's see who should not live there. Uh, first of all, individuals seeking um, nightlife and upscale restaurants. Second, those who prioritize living in high-rise condominiums with modern amenities. Third, people that expect very sustainable and rich demographics uh, around. And fourth, families who consider top private schools options for their children. Please keep in mind that Leslieville and Riverdale will work for first-time home buyers. Uh, more than uh, the beaches and Danforth village. However, if your family is growing and you'd like to find uh, yourself in a more mature environment, then choose the beaches and Danforth village. The second part of Toronto to talk about is West Side. Uh, 
Let's see which neighborhoods to consider and who should live here. If you like Toronto West, uh, then keep in mind that not every pocket here should be within your scope of attention, especially if you move as a family. Bloor West Village, High Park, Swansea and Roncesvalles uh, are the best areas to consider. If I had to recommend, then I would put Bloor West Village and High Park in the main priorities. Swansea and Roncesvalles would become the second choice. Bloor West Village and High Park are beloved neighborhoods known for their small town charm and family-friendly atmosphere. Tree-lined streets, local shops, cafes, restaurants, making it a pedestrian-friendly neighborhood. Add here highly ranked public Catholic schools of English and French immersion. Swansea and Roncesvalles uh, are the neighborhood with a strong sense of community coupled with their proximity to High Park, so they appeal to families and young professionals alike. The box score in these areas is lower than in Bloor West Village and High Park. The properties are on average smaller, that's why you potentially may find cheaper properties here. Moving to the third part of Toronto, which is central Toronto, I have to say that it is very large and it stretches from Bloor Street to Highway 401, roughly between Bathurst and Bayview. It consists of a lot of neighborhoods and pockets, which I describe in detail at the first consultation, during city tours and, of course, showings. So, who would like to live in central Toronto? Mainly families. They are attracted by numerous top-ranked uh, public schools, prestigious private schools and daycares of different types with different approaches. Not to mention sports facilities, places for family activities, parks, recreational centers, clubs and excellent entertainment options. Central Toronto is my preferred area for clients with families because uh, of all the things that I just mentioned and also a few other features. Low crime rates, great transit scores, um, lots of local stores, restaurants, businesses along main streets, quite consistent demographics, comfortable and even luxury lifestyle. You can't go wrong when choosing a place to live in central Toronto. The only task is that you need to pick the right neighborhood which will speak to your heart and mind and of course your budget. Keep also in mind that some areas are less walkable than the others, some lots are less private than the others and almost every street has its own value. To sort all these things out, please refer to a knowledgeable realtor Realtor services for buyers are free and you will get an immense volume of uh, knowledge and experience on your side. The most desirable areas in central Toronto are Forest Hill, Lawrence Park, Lytton Park and Rosedale. Less expensive neighborhoods are Bedford Park, Chaplin's Estates, Davisville Village, Leaside and many more. Please get in touch to find out which area will match your needs and goals. The fourth part of Toronto that I differentiate from others is downtown. This area is all about condo buildings of different types, low rises, mid rises and high rises. A condo lifestyle is for professionals, young singles, couples or clients who wish to avoid maintaining a house. The most advanced and desirable condo neighborhoods in downtown Toronto are St. Lawrence Market, Entertaining District, Bay Street Corridor, uh, King West and Yorkville. All of them are very different and offer completely different lifestyles. If you are looking for a luxury lifestyle, choose Yorkville. If you are after uh, great restaurants, clubs and nightlife, uh, go for Entertainment District. If you are a student at the University of Toronto, Bay Street Corridor will be your best match. There is one more significant condo area in Toronto, however, it is located in central Toronto, not in downtown. It is uh, Young and Eglinton. This area will be a great choice for professionals, singles, uh, couples and families with young children. While talking about condo neighborhoods, please keep in mind that even in the best areas there are condo buildings that I can recommend and those which you need to avoid. And again, please get in touch with me to explore the condo market in Toronto. And the last, fifth part of Toronto is Toronto North. This area is bounded by Highway 401 to the south, Steel uh, Avenue to the north, Dufferin Street to the west and Don Mills Road to the east.
North Toronto is a mix of houses, condominiums and wide variety of amenities in the area. Condo buildings are mostly located around uh, Young and Shepherd intersection and along Young Street. The houses are located on both sides of uh, Young Street deep in the blocks. We distinguish Willowdale East and Willowdale West when it comes to choosing a house. Those areas are mostly populated by families with children. Willowdale East is considered to be a more prestigious part than Willowdale West, but I would say they are both equal in the lifestyle, architecture, amenities and so on. The main difference is that Willowdale East is a much bigger area and historically it attracted uh, more developers than west side. Consequently, due to the larger number of new homes and bigger properties, this part showed higher price tags. Also, Willowdale East is home to one of the most desirable and highly ranked public schools, Earl Hague Secondary School. If you are interested in North Toronto and living there, please keep in mind that the walk scores are quite low here, which makes its uh, lifestyle car dependent. Also, these two areas offer different homes starting from bungalows and one-story original homes ranging to luxury uh, homes built on 50 feet wide lots. North Toronto in general features a great infrastructure that uh, caters to its residents. Uh, you will find here a lot of large grocery stores, small convenience stores, cinemas, gyms, restaurants, places for outdoor activities, parks, a few schools with good rankings, uh, and uh, so on. All this makes a good environment for families. Numerous condo buildings attract also young people. They are, in most cases, tenants. Even though North Toronto is lively and booming, I must indicate that given its remote location to central Toronto and downtown, this area is pricey. You might find more benefits settling down south of Highway 401 compared to North Toronto. Please contact me to discuss the best streets in North Toronto, prices for homes and the lifestyle there. In conclusion, I would like to remind you that uh, we were talking today about five biggest parts of Toronto uh, that offer different lifestyles, cater to different clients' needs and serve different purposes. This is a very general video. Please follow for more videos where I describe each area in detail. Hope this video was helpful. I would like to remind you that I am a real estate broker with Sotheby's International Realty and I am helping my clients find their homes in Toronto. If you need any assistance in choosing a great neighborhood in the city, Contact me by calling, texting, emailing, or even commenting down below. I'm actively using WhatsApp, Viber, and WeChat for your convenience. Also, I would like to remind you to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that bell button to be notified every time I post a new video about living in Toronto as well as its real estate. Please comment down below with your questions. And if you are thinking of moving to Toronto or simply relocating to a great neighborhood, I will be happy to help. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next videos.